Welcome to another episode of Fast Keys Tutorials. When we're writing to different people, we often need to personalize our messages to them. Fast Keys can be more interactive and dynamic than just a simple text expander. Look how nice it is when this text expander prompts me for the client's name and to select a day of the week to create this sentence. I'm Milo Shapiro, public speaking coach and Fast Keys expert, and today I want to take a look at one of the most powerful features in Fast Keys, and that's user input macros. Let's get started. First, I'll start creating a new text expander by selecting the New button on the top right. As a good example, let's create what could be a standard customer mail. I have a few generic sentences ready to go, and I'll paste them in as a starting place for my substitution. Not bad, but not very personal. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the customer name. I'll go up to the user input menu and select a manual text input macro. These macros are perfect for entering dynamic text into the substitution text, like names, amounts, and so on, things that could vary each time you use it. I'll give the macro a name like this. There are several other options toward the bottom, like a macro description, default text, and input formats. All useful, but for now, I want you to get the main concept, so I'll leave them at their defaults and click OK. As you can see, the input macro field was inserted as a placeholder for a customer name. You can always double click on the macro field, and this will allow you to edit the macro. Let's personalize it even a little bit more. I've got this sentence here that starts with, it would be a pleasure. And I want to insert that same customer name here too, so it would say, George, it would be a pleasure. But I don't want to have to enter the same name repeatedly. So instead, I'll simply copy the customer field and paste it below. This way, I'll only be asked for the name once, but the name will be inserted in both places. Get it? Okay, then I've got this price here. I'll use the manual text input macro again. I'll give it a name and description. And since this field should only ever be a number, I'll select the format called Show Thousands Separator to restrict the input to numbers only. Okay, now we have a price placeholder in the correct place. Next, I've got a place in the note where I'm going to insert a free gift to the customer. The gift isn't always the same, though. There are three different gifts I might give. So this time, I'm going to use a selection form macro to do this. By using this macro, instead of allowing free text input, it's going to display a list of predefined choices when we use the text expander. As before, I'll give it a name and description. You get to choose what type of selection control is appearing. So if you prefer a list box, drop down, radio, date, you could even use a random selection. That's up to you. I'll use a list box for this case, and we'll give it three gift choice options, one per line. I'll click OK to save. Now, suppose there's a sentence in here which should be optional. Like, we often attach a catalog, but not always. I'm going to create a new macro field. I'll again select Selection Form Macro and give it a name. This time, I'll select a checkbox selection type and paste my optional sentence here. So now, I'll be able to optionally select to put that sentence into the email if I'm attaching the catalog, or skip the sentence if I won't. Finally, I'd like the chance to add some optional text at the very bottom of the email. I'll use the manual text input macro again. This time, I'll go with a default of, thanks for your order, and enable the multi-line option. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, I've got the phrase completed. I'll set the abbreviation string to X quote and I'll give it a short description. Okay, time to see how it all works. I'll go ahead and open a mail app and I'll type my abbreviation. And you can see that before expanding, 
fast keys now asks me to fill in or select the required fields. So let's say my customer is George. The price quote is 1,200. See the thousand separator, which we set as an option. With this email, I am attaching the catalog. So I'll select this option and the sentence will be added. Then I'll choose the I care package as my gift. Remember how we set the default greeting at the end as thanks for your order? I could add something, but I'm going to leave it as is. When all set, I'll press enter or click OK and bam, I have my highly customized email ready to be sent. You see, what a time saver. If you type a lot of similar emails, user input macros can seriously improve your productivity. Now, there's two more little tricks I want to show you before ending this video. I'll open my phrase again. And OK, I was not really happy how the optional text was showing up on the input dialog. It was too long and unintuitive. But there is a solution for that. I can add a description to each selection. In my case, I'll add the word attached, followed by a double colon, which is a descriptor separator in FastKeys. Watch and you'll see now that only the description will show on the input dialog instead of that whole long text. The other thing I wanted to show you was how to quickly add today's date at the end of the phrase. I'll position the cursor where I want the date to appear and then select date and time menu. There are many date time options that we'll fully cover in other videos. For today, I'll simply select one of the presets available. I like this one. Done. Instant, easy, and always accurate. So now let's go back to the Mail app. We'll start our abbreviation again. See how now it says the catalog slash attached instead of that whole text? Much better. This time, I'll select a hair treatment as a gift and enter a quick additional text to the end of my email. And that's it. See how this time today's date was added at the bottom. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the content, please subscribe to our channel and also check out the description below for the link to the Fast Keys webpage. And to learn more about my speech coaching, come to publicdynamics.com. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.